everyone, it's Laura. Today I'm gonna to be working on fixing a couple of containers, this one here and that one, both of which are in our Versailles garden. They have golden arborvitaes in them that I moved from different containers last fall. They have not fared winter very well. Uh, and I know by the looks of things, it's sunny out, hardly any snow left, end of January, we are so lucky. It looks like we haven't had a hard winter and we really haven't. Um, but in the beginning of it, we had a lot of wind and like torrential rain. Like we had a couple of really bad rainstorms that just beat the crap out of these arborvitas. They just were not prepared for it because they were so coddled before. So let me turn the camera around and show you where they moved from. So I don't know if you guys remember that I had those tall cylinder black bleaker containers right here by the door. Um, and they did really well. The arbs like did surprisingly well with the amount of sun that they did not get, uh, but they were getting too big. So I moved these urns in along with the boxwood cones this past fall and they have been wonderful, but the poor arborvitas just didn't like the change. Also, can you see all that blue tape on the window? That was Benjamin and my activity this morning. <laughs> he had a lot of fun just standing there peeling tape off the window. Good job. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm learning all sorts of fun games for one-year-olds right now. Anyway, you can see that the shape is just not great, and I never really thought this spot got beat by the wind, but I think it kind of comes down in a wind tunnel right along the side of the house, and then just this poor plant just got nailed. The other one, the shape was a little bit better, but they both do have their winter color on that bronze. They're not dead. Um, some plants just take on this bronze color and then they green back up in the spring. But these are just not keeping with the formality that I kind of want up in this space. So Erin and I are gonna head down to the garden center really quick to see if we can find two matching something. Hopefully we can find like a couple spirals. I don't know, it is kind of the off season. So we'll see. We have arrived. So look at, they're having a pergola built. They've had to clear all of the bagged stuff that they usually have up here off of the sidewalk to make room, but it's gonna be so pretty and a place to hang uh, hanging plants. There's my dad. <laughs> so the garden center in January doesn't have a whole lot because they really do sell most of their stuff, but they always have um, a selection of evergreens and you can see my mom's already been working on setting up tables. There are just all these black tables, kind of like where Aaron is. Let me walk out there a little bit. All of these black tables, as well as these, will all have roses on them here pretty quick. So I would really like to find maybe a couple of matching spirals or just evergreens even that I could plant out in the landscape once it gets a little bit warmer. So it doesn't really necessarily have to be something architectural. Hey mom. What's up? So apparently Aaron doesn't think I should get evergreens. He thinks I should try to find some topiary forms, which I'm not opposed to, um, just so that I don't have, because I do have plans for those containers later on. Like I do have some annuals ordered that are coming in, which means any evergreen that I put in now, I would have to dig out in the spring and then put them in the garden, which I'm not opposed to doing that. Um, but if I don't have to, that might be kind of nice because I could use topiary forms like all over the place really easily. So I just wanted to take a quick run through this area right here. This is where we typically store all of the pottery in the winter time um, because it's undercover. It's the only spot really other than the greenhouse that doesn't really get the elements, but there's some really pretty things out here. And those are kind of neat, the galvanized raised beds and containers. Ooh, I think these are cool too. These pots that kind of have the scalloped edge, I like those. But no obelisks or topiary forms at all, so I think I'm gonna have to run inside for that. Check out this dude. This is a double graft, it's it's uh, unique. You want oh, that, you, I know it. you know it. <laughs> That's a spruce on the top, and our blue spruce on the, on the top, and a tail, a green spruce grafted onto the side. I don't know. I don't believe it's in GMOs of, like that. It's a piece of, she, piece of art, Laura. Piece of art. Piece of art. Show of hands, who would put this in your garden? <laughs> you want to show me that again? <laughs> Keeping your hands tight to your sides, I see. So okay, Aaron, so I could a metal I could put something like this. There are two. They're cute. Yeah, and those are really easy to pop like and they're really easy into the to garden. Care for. I mean they're real low maintenance. I also love these. Now I wouldn't put these in a container because they're kind of wild, but in the landscape they're awesome. 
the red cone Norway red cone Norway spruce I had one in my old garden and I just loved it and while we're out here we may as well take a spin through the greenhouse I was out here the other day I did some stories in my Instagram but it's just such a wonderful warm place to be on a day like this oh my word it is warm in here I love it so this is where any shrubs or perennials that are left, they come in here to winter. And there's really not all that many. There's some bulb planters, crocus and lilies, tulips. Ooh, those, that's gonna be pretty. Look at that mix right there. That'll be a beautiful bouquet. And look at these hellebores blooming their heads off. Coral bark maple. Isn't that beautiful? In our area, we cannot plant Japanese maples in full sun um, because they just fry because there's no protection. We get so much blasting sun with very little humidity and very little cloud cover that we have to site them in a spot that only gets morning sun, which is awesome because you can put something like this coral bark in an area um, that typically you can only use like shade type of plants in, which you know, you're kind of limited a little bit. Um, not as much now as maybe before because there's so many beautiful like hookahs now and um, Lots of beautiful hostas, but this just kind of lets you have another option in our area to kind of add a bright spot, especially for winter interest with this type of maple. Look at that. It's like a red twig dogwood alternative that does really well in the shade. Little violas and pansies over here, and they're looking really nice. Just healthy foliage on most of them there. Gosh, it just helps to see something green, doesn't it? Even if the plants like aren't at their peak, just to see a little hint of foliage and stuff, oh, it just does something for me. Okay, Aaron, let's see if we can find one. Yeah, see, and they're way too big. I see them right there. They're beautiful. But those are like, those are, massive. those are like for the large estate planters up front, which that would be pretty. We could pull all the branches out and put these in. Well, I don't, we can't have two different sizes, but. That's not two different sizes. That's the same. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. I was thinking something that was, oh. <laughs> did you look at the price yeah, tag? I did. How, how about something like this? Maybe, maybe one of these. $29.99. How about that? I think this would look good. Maybe a peacock. I'm not sure that the scale is right on that. Look at these staghorn ferns. Look at how pretty those are, Aaron. Oh, you know what we should put Hey, out I don't I feel, feel oh, like you're. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's great. I feel like you need to like marvel at that a little bit. I feel like I have a reluctant participant right now. Not reluctant. <laughs> I think the lollipop pines would be perfect because I think they're the right scale and there's something that I can plant out in the garden later, easily. Like to flank a pathway somewhere, like underneath the pines. Yeah, but they burn in the summer. Those don't burn? The don't pines? Burn? No. Oh, you're picking pines instead of the spirals. Right. Okay. Yeah, the little lollipop pines, see? Let's do it, let's get them. Okay, so I see that there are two right here and then there were a couple around the back. So let me take a look at the shape. I actually think these two right here are gonna be the closest in height and shape, right? This one and this one? Or this, uh, one this one here, I'm casting a total shadow, sorry. Can't see it very well. And then that one right there. Okay. And they're probably really heavy. So let me go grab a cart, Erin. Okay. I think that'd be easier. There's a cart. What do you think of them, Aaron? I love them. Do you love them? <laughs> They're kind of like Dr. Seuss trees. They kind of are a little bit, but they'll broaden up a little bit. I don't know. Why are they so heavy? Well, they're dug out of a field that's like clay, huh. where they're grown. They're pretty heavy. We're back home now and we are gonna gather up a few supplies. So Aaron's grabbing the lawn tractor. We've gotta get potting soil, um, the plants out of the back of the truck. And then, boy, what else do we need? Gloves. And I think with those arbs that I have in the pots, they'll probably come out in one big piece because they're probably frozen still. Um, so I'll just put the whole thing in the greenhouse. How many bags do we need? Of soil. Um, I would say probably three per pot. All right, that's six. I think we're gonna be able to pop right down into those pots. Oh. 
So I'm actually really surprised because the soil was not completely uh, frozen. Like, look at this. It's really workable. I thought that this whole square ball of soil was gonna come out all in one big chunk, um, which would, wouldn't have been ideal. This is so perfect because then I can utilize the same soil. I'm not gonna need to use a whole bunch of extra soil at this point. Um, there were some plants in here, like there's a little viola. This is a little white colored viola. Um, and then some other things like, there was a couple of hookeras or hookerellas, I can't remember which, that I put in here in the fall. And I'll just take these to the greenhouse and pot them up and let them grow on in there. I think they'd actually be much better off. So anyway, we're gonna pop these out of their containers and get them planted. So I just created a well for each one of the pines. So that's what each pot looks like right now. And then I think that this root ball on the Arborvita is small enough that it will fit right down inside one of these pots. It's perfect. So these evergreens are bald and burlapped, so I wanna make sure to cut the ropes that are around it. I can leave the burlap because that will disintegrate and then the plant can root out into the soil, but you wanna make sure that any rope or anything that's tied anywhere around this root ball is all cut and removed. If you don't get it all cut, what can happen is it can girdle the trunk and eventually choke the tree and kill it. It's no good. That's why that no work. <laughs> That's why that no work. So it looks like all the rope is gone and this is pretty frozen right here on the top. So as soon as it thaws out enough this spring, I can come in and kind of loosen this burlap, even though that really isn't 100% necessary. The burlap isn't tied to the trunk um, and it will disintegrate with, you know, water and time out here uh, exposed to the elements. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but I was going to mention that January is typically not the time of year to be replanting your pots outside. Um, but I'm fairly confident in doing it right now because these plants have been wintering outside so they're totally used to all the temperatures we've been getting. In fact, they're gonna be more insulated in these new pots than they were in these little black plastic pots because all of a sudden they're gonna have a good four, uh, like four to five inches of soil, new soil around their root ball so that's even more insulation. So I just wanted to make mention of that that if you are buying stuff in a heated greenhouse or something like that or you have something inside Probably not a good idea to put it right outside into frigid temperatures because they're not acclimated. Want to plant acclimated plants. Yeah, that's better, thank you. Well, they definitely look cleaned up. I would much rather look at a nice tidy topiary, even if it's not quite the right scale, than something that looks like a great big mess. So I'm pretty sure that I touched my face with my muddy glove at some point. So I apologize if I'm a complete dirty mess, but I am really happy with how these turned out. I do need to water them in still, so I'll water them in really well today. I probably won't need to touch them for another month. Um, we do have some rain on the for in the forecast, so that's good. Um, but like I said, these are just a placeholder for the next couple of months until I get my other flowers in. And I think that the scale of this type of topiary will look really pretty, maybe planted in the landscape, like flanking the entrance of a small pathway. And I have plenty of areas in this garden that I've, you know, I have holes everywhere. So it'll be really easy for me to tuck these in the landscape. And I love to do that with containers like buy something that I can use for the time that serves a purpose and then use it again out in the landscape. And while we were up here, Erin and I noticed that all of our wood is almost gone. So we're gonna use the opportunity um, to get some wood hauled in while we're both out here. I also need to run into the greenhouse and finish potting up those arbs. So those arbs, um, they'll be fine. I just need to get them potted up, watered in, and then I will just winter them over in the greenhouse and either find a spot for them here in my garden or rehome them. We got the wood up here, not a ton. Last time I got it all the way over to the patio, but we didn't have a lot of time, but this will see us through the rest of the week and the weekend. I did notice how pretty the pansies were looking over here though, that I would show you really quick. I planted these in the latter part of fall and they still just look so pretty. We held my sister-in-law's baby shower right out here in the lawn 
in fall and so I just kind of popped some color in here because it didn't really have much going on so anyway that's it for today we just had those couple of projects we wanted to get done and I do have to say that getting these pots cleaned out and putting something fresh in them just makes me so happy being able to be out here in January is such a treat like I can't even believe that I'm able to do something like this for those of you under snow I hope that seeing something green and some flowers in the ground just gives you some hope like a promise of what's to come because I know how you feel that was our winter two years ago we had 52 inches of snow uh, we got down to negative 17 and it was horrible and miserable um, and I just wanted spring so bad so anyway I feel like mother nature's kind of like paying us back for that winter so I just hope um, you enjoyed seeing this video we try to um like document as much as we can out here and I hope that's fun for you guys just to see even the little transformations but it's nice for us I love to go back and watch old tours or look at old pictures and realize how far we've come like how much we've actually accomplished because it's easy to get overwhelmed I get overwhelmed all the time even though we're constantly doing projects I still have a huge long list and it feels like it's really slow to get certain things done and you know you kind of just you get impatient but then you just need to step back and realize like you know what no we're doing we're doing good we're getting lots it's done um, and yeah I don't know if you guys feel that way about stuff that you're working on but anyway hope you guys enjoyed thanks for hanging out today and we will see you in the next one bye